Welcome. I'm so glad we're able to worship together today on this first Sunday of Advent. This Advent, we are talking about Christmas traditions. And today, we're talking about lights and decorations. Let's calm our hearts and our minds to prepare to hear God's words and to worship. Today is the first Sunday in the season of Advent. Advent means coming, and in this season we prepare for the coming of Christ. We light the candle on the Advent wreath to remind us of the blessings that Christ brings to the world. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope. Hope is like a flame that warms and comforts us. As we light this candle, we celebrate the hope of the prophets and the hope we have in Jesus Christ. We continue to hope in God's promise that Christ will continue to fill our lives and the life of the world with love and joy and peace. Thank you, God, for the flame of hope. As we prepare for Christ's coming, help us to share our hope with others. Amen. Let us pray. In this Advent season, we await the coming of Christ. Light of the world, come. Come to the oppressed and exploited. Come to the despised and rejected. Come to all in whom the divine image is distorted. We wait in joyful expectation. Come not as a man of power, but in love and compassion. Come to the outcast, like the shepherds in the fields. Come to the foreigners, like the magi watching from afar. Come to the rich and poor, young and old, male and female. We wait in hopeful anticipation. Come to bless all creation with your love. Come to bring salvation on the earth. Come to rule with justice and in peace. Come, light of the world, illuminate our path. We wait with all the peoples of the earth. Light of the world, we welcome your coming. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Isaiah 9, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Great will be his authority, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A dear friend of the family gifted us with a nativity set inside a snow globe that sort of looked like a lamp. When my grandson saw it, he was enthralled. He lays down and he stares at it with wonderment. Every now and then, he asked me to tell him once more the story of the manger inside of the snow globe. Wide-eyed and intently listening to the story, I fall in love with both my grandson as he's smiling and even more with our Savior. These are the moments I cherish. During Advent, we will be discussing Christmas traditions. And today, we are looking at the tradition of lights and decorations. Long before Christ was born, the prophet Isaiah brought a message about the Messiah to the Israelites. He said, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. I think of all the generations who heard these words and were given hope. Isaiah's prophet, prophecy was originally given to the northern tribes of Israel after they were severely ravaged when the Assyrians came and invaded from the north. The northern tribes were the first to suffer from the Assyrian invasion. So in God's mercies, 
they will be the first to see the Messiah. Matthew 4, 13 through 16 quotes this passage as clearly fulfilled in the Galilean ministry of Jesus. Since the majority of Jesus' ministry took place in the northern area of Israel around the Sea of Galilee, those living at, the time, at Jesus' time were indeed the first to see Jesus, that light in the same area where those northern tribes were attacked. From before Christ's life to the years of his life, and then around the world for over 2,000 years, Jesus, the light in the darkness, has been celebrated. Long ago, Scandinavians used straw to create stars, crowns, angels, and even simple nativity sets to adorn their homes. You see, the Vikings had begun this tradition of honoring their pagan gods, but as they converted to the Christian faith, they adapted the decorations to reflect their spiritual faith of Christmas in their observance. Now, about the same time, Germans and Italians began creating wooden frames shaped like triangles made of shelves or layers which hung on the wall and on each of those shelves they would place trinkets paintings um, small ornaments these were called lichtdachs in germany and ceppos in italy years later during the time of the reformation germans began bringing trees into their homes Branches were lopped off to make wreaths for their doors or windows. And then those trees were lit with candles representing the light of Christ. And then there's a long history of glass ornaments in Germany. Then the importers in the U.S. would bring them over from Germany, but seeing that there was a ne another world war coming, one of the greatest importers began making those ornaments in America. Then, with the invention of plastics during that war, the ornaments became easier to create and to attain, so that soon the ornaments were filling trees, the shiny baubles. Now, all of these decorations and lights have grown into today's large displays of light and color inside and outside. Now, every year in my home growing up, we had a special tree trimming party in the family. Listen, we didn't have a lot, but we always had special treats. And we listened to my parents' Christmas records as we hung the handmade Christmas ornaments on our tree. We loved to look at each ornament and retell the stories of Sunday school teachers or classrooms where we made the ornaments or the ones we made with mom at home. There was one in particular that was just about the ugliest ornament on the tree. It was really heavy. It was made out of that homemade salt dough that you let dry. It's kind of this wad painted gray. And I made that when I was about three. And when my mom asked me what it was, my answer was wasty, wasty. She would say, but she would ask me again and again. And I would always say wasty, wasty. Nobody knew what that meant. Still to this day, we don't know what the wasty, wasty was, but we hung it on that tree every year until it started crumbling and falling apart. That is a family tradition I will never forget. Decoration, trees, lights, ornaments, these play a special part in our Christmas celebrations. But let's not forget that it all started on the other side of the globe with Vikings making ornaments reflecting the birth of Christ with straw. Just like the straw the Christ child laid upon the night of his birth. And then we think of, we need to remember that those candles resting on the tree branches were the light of Christ, Christ, the light of the world. Now, things are different today. 
Decorations are more secular. They are often to uh, put up to recognize, you know, Santa and reindeers and all of these things. And, and they light up our homes, indoors and outdoors. And though we may enjoy these lights, do we really think of Christ, the light of the world, when we see them? I love looking at a lit up snowman in a light in a, someone's yard, but when I look at it, I don't necessarily think of Christ, the light of the world. Today's scripture is well known, but I want you to listen to it again, and this time think on the decorations and lights of Christmas. Hear God's word. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The light, warmth, and peace describing our Lord Jesus is more beautiful than any decoration. But maybe... When we look upon lights and decorations this year, we can purposefully think on the birth of our Savior. Because, you see, shiny baubles and special ornaments evoke memories of Christmas past, but the most important memory of Christmas past is brought forth with every image of the stable wherein baby Jesus lies. The lights on those trees and houses are beacons in winter night skies, but Christ's light is a beacon for all darkness everywhere, inside our souls as well as in the world. The industry of Christmas decor is multi-millions of dollars every year. The cost is high, but the cost of Jesus' life is priceless. The people who walk in the darkness have seen a great light. Look beyond the Christmas lights and instead choose to see the light of the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all of God's bright-eyed children said, Amen. Jesus, born to set thy people free from our sins and fears, release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel, strength and consolation, hope of all the earth, the world, dear desire of the Joy of 
bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.